Uh, but we are dealing at this moment with a, a situation that we read about, every one of us have. Some of us don't understand it, and some of us like to run away from it. And that is, you could say, houses in which there are demons, they call them haunted houses. And things that appear and disappear, you call them ghosts. We know and understand that houses are dwelling places where human families grow up together, live together, enjoy living together. That's what houses are for. Maybe we didn't know that just as a human person has a personality, that a house, a dwelling place, or even a building like the one we're in now, possesses a type of personality that belongs to whatever happens there. This personality is formed by what takes place, whether it's in a house or a building like this one. If, if you walked into a casino, you'd have altogether different feeling than when you walk into this room here. You see, the, the, each building has its own respective personality. Houses do that. You, you feel when you walk into a house, the people that live there. If they're gentle people, you will feel it as you walk through the door. If they're belligerent, you'll find that anger just pushing right straight out the front door. And so houses do possess the spirits of the people that live in those houses. In our community in, in the city of Mishawaka, some of you may have noticed it in your newspapers a few years ago. And this is to show you that a manifestation of evil is not a geographical situation. It's certainly not a racial situation. It doesn't matter whether you're an Indonesian or a European, uh, that, that simply doesn't matter. Our local newspaper here in the city carried a bizarre story of a family uh, living over in, in, in Mishawaka here. They were having stones and bricks thrown against their house. Anybody remember that, uh, that thing in the newspaper? A a against their house. Now, when I went over there to investigate, when I was invited to, we saw the stones on the ground and the concussions of the marks on the wall. And the man of the house would run outside when the, when the, when the bricks and stones would hit his house. And there they were, but there wasn't a person anywhere around at all. And then it didn't stay outside of the house. Inside of his house, something would move his refrigerator across the room, which is quite heavy. And the television set would move around. And they would come home from work, both of them work, and found the whole of their house inside overturned with all their furniture. And I don't know whether you remember the story very well or not, a, a local policeman, uh, the, the newspaper was there at the same time, and a local policeman uh, saw all this mess, and, and he, he said, yes, I, I see it and all about it. And, and the police department uh, almost fired him uh, because he was uh, saying that he believed in these ghosts or whatever they were in that, in that house. Uh, through one of the factories here in town, this man heard of me, and I went over there, and they were Roman Catholic people. And, and the, the place was all messed up. Everything was upside down, turned over. And they said, now, we didn't touch a thing. It says, it says this is where we found our house. We got the home. It says it all, all happened when, when we were, were not here. But it says at night, it all happens again at night while we're trying to sleep. So I led them in a sinner's prayer first. And, and they were quite willing for it. And then I took authority over that spirit that was tormenting that house. And I began to name it. I said, you can throw no more stones at this place. And I commanded. it. And I said, don't you throw another one either. And I said, you cannot remove the refrigerator from its spot. It has to stay where it is. And I forbid you to move the television set anywhere. And I command you to leave that table alone. You've been moving around here. And I went through the whole routine and I said, in fact, I'm commanding you to leave now and not come back. And I put the blood of Jesus Christ, God's son around this place. We contacted those folks weeks later, and they had not had a single manifestation of that thing again. Now, we know that God's power is greater than the devil's power. And this, this class, this class has, has met here for one purpose, and that is to get you to know the power of God. Otherwise, we're wasting our time here. I am not here to tell you stories. I'm here to tell you that there is a negative force in the world, but there is a more powerful force, and that we are not afraid of the devil. And that we can remove him. Jesus said that even the gates of hell cannot prevail against his church.
And that represents the strongest thing the devil has. It don't matter how big he is, Jesus is a little bigger. Amen. It doesn't matter what he does, Jesus can do more. Those men in Egypt that were sorcerers that threw down, <laughs> threw down their rods and they became snakes. They thought they were big shots until Moses swallowed up theirs and, and they, they didn't even have a rod anymore. They had to go buy them another one. You see, God can do more than the devil every time. And I won't ever stop short of that. And God doesn't want his church. We're living in the most dramatic moment in the history of the world when, when God is going to reveal his power. That's the reason there's so many in this class. God is going to reveal his power as he never has before. And God's people are going to do more miracles than they have ever done before. We're not living in the dying embers of a, of a dead church. But we're living in the glorious manifestation of the Son of Righteousness arising with healing in His wings. And we're ready to see the glory and the majesty of God destroy the works of the devil in Jesus' name. It don't matter what they are, He can destroy them. But I just want you to know that there are houses that have entities in them that are not human. And that we, as God's people, have more power than they have. And that we can move them from the place. So when people tell about uh, ghost houses and so forth, they are correct, uh, but they, the name of them is wrong. Now, when there are entities of this kind, that uh, th their relationship to you can be by sound, because there are all kinds of rappings and poundings and clangings and footsteps and, and all kinds of sound, and we have heard, we've heard this from, well, hundreds of people, uh, voices, both intellig intelligible and unintelligible, groans, moans, and, and Sometimes animal sounds, sometimes uh, inanimate sounds, uh, uh, something hitting itself like a spoon hitting the wall or something or another, and even telephone ringing and, and there's nobody there, music being played and there's nobody playing it. And, and so through the area of sound, there have been these manifestations. You can rebuke those and they will go and they will cease. Then there have been sight, appearances of shadowy figures of human-like beings. I've heard of these all over the world and more in England than any other place than I've ever been. Animals or strange objects are considered traditional signs of haunted houses. Sometimes religious symbols appear, such as crucifixes. Let's don't play with this subject. Let's believe it. Let's prepare ourselves for it, and let's set humanity free. God wants humans to be free. It's amazing how many Christians don't know how to fight the devil, and, and they go to pieces when he manifests himself. If they stood right up quickly, uh, they, you know, there'd be nothing happened except he'd have to leave. How many understand this? How many believe this? We've got to get a world to believe this and, and, and to understand this because there are more satanic forces, you know, that are operating against human beings today than there has ever operated before. And really, it's a joy to set people free. It's, there's a great peace in your heart for setting people free. You don't have to even do it with a loud voice. You can just say, I command you to be free by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the Great Commission. And I thank Jesus that you're free now. You better believe it. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? You know, you, you have spoken the word. You have spoken it in power. And you, you've spoken it in truth. It has to work. And it does work. God sets people free. And we believe that there will be more and more areas in this country that will need to be set free. There's only one thing that, uh, that, that, that grips me, and that's a novice seeking to work in a, in, in a position that they're not ready for. That, that, that is the only thing. You, you, you have to be spiritually geared up inside. Uh, Jesus spoke to his own disciples and said, this kind cometh out only by prayer and fasting. This, he could have said, spiritual maturity. He, he could have said, because you haven't cleansed your own person, you know. If you're going to enter into combat in, in spiritual forces, you need yourself right. And, and you need yourself clean. And you need yourself focused for it. Every great deliverance that I've had in my life, I fasted some. And I came into the, into the battle with my whole being concentrated on nothing else but that battle. And I've never failed to win. Not one time have ever failed to win. There's victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're God's cleanup men and cleanup women. 
clean up men and clean up buildings by the mighty power of God. This is one of the precious treasures of truth that God has given me over the years. There's no way you could put a price on this. You could offer millions of dollars, but it wouldn't be sufficient. There is no monetary value equal to the value of this truth. I want to say it very simply, and I trust I'll make it clear. Listen carefully. We overcome Satan when we testify personally to what the Word of God says, the blood of Jesus does for us. I'm going to say that again. We overcome Satan when we testify personally to what the Word of God says the blood of Jesus does for us.